So at Twitter, we train our advertising models continuously. This means that ad samples are ingested by our models as soon as they become available. Now, why is that important? Because our empirical results suggest that new campaign IDs are uh, constantly become available on our platform, while at the same time, feature distributions and probability of ad click change through time. In particular, we observed that within one hour of model training, about 14% of uh, the total uh, uh, ad traffic corresponds to new campaigns. Regarding non-stationarity of features, this was also evident for many of the user and ad features. So, um, the, the problem that uh, we face with continuous training is that the ground truth labels are not available straight away. So, as soon as an ad is displayed uh, to a user, then the user might click on it uh, within one hour or like even longer after the ad is displayed. So, as soon as we ingest, uh, we introduce the samples to the models, we don't know what the actual label is. Why is this a challenge? Because we need to choose whether we wait until the ground truth label becomes available. But in this case, we, uh, we risk deteriorating the model quality, as you can see in this, in this plot, since we see that um, as soon as the, the longer that we wait until we refresh our models, the worse the model quality gets. Um, on the other hand, if we don't wait for the ground truth labels, we, uh, we apply a continuous training framework, then we need to decide on the label. One way to tackle this problem is introduce all ad samples to, to the models with a negative label initially. In this example, we have the same ad shown to two different users, and this is originally introduced to the model with a negative label. As soon as user one clicks on the ad, this, the same ad sample is again introduced to the model, but this time with a positive label. So, in this case, we have a duplicate of the user ad uh, features, and uh, this renders the original sample a fake negative. Now, this might work well in cases where we have a low click-through rate, but not otherwise. In state-of-the-art work on delayed feedback models, uh, that was introduced by Chappelle uh, from Quitel, the probability of click was not considered not constant through time. In that case, a second model was devised that captured the, captures the delay between impression and click and is similar to survival time analysis models. In that case, we can assume an exponential or other non-parametric distribution for the time delay. In this example. Uh, in this plot, which is generated from our Twitter training data, we can, uh, and we can see on the x-axis the time to click since impression uh, in minutes, and then on the y-axis -axis, y we can see the number of clicks. And we can, it's pretty obvious that assuming an exponential distribution for the time to click is a reasonable choice. At the same time, we can see that for many of the ads, users will only engage with them with, even with a five-hour uh, delay. In our approach, where we ingest all samples initially with a negative label, we essentially observe a biased data distribution B, which contains more negatives than the actual data distribution P. In order to correct for this, in our loss function, we introduce uh, importance weights, which account for the fact that we're now averaging over a different distribution that is biased. Overall, we, we employ a continuous training scheme, which potentially allows us to wait an infinite amount of time until we observe a positive engagement or a click. 
we compared two different models of line, a simpler logistic regression model, which is very commonly used in display advertising, and a wide and deep model. For both of these models, we compare four different loss functions, one based on the delayed feedback model that was introduced by Chappelle, one based on a loss function based on positive and non-labeled learning that was uh, proposed by Duplessis et al. And then two approaches that rely on important sampling, positive negative weighted loss and positive uh, negative, uh, fake negative calibration. For the delayed feedback loss, as mentioned earlier, we assume an exponential distribution for the time to click delay, since this is a reasonable choice based on our, our empirical data. So that uh, entails introducing a, a term in the traditional cross entropy loss that accounts for the time elapsed since impression E for unclicked ads and the time until engagement for clicked ads D. These two approaches that uh, rely on important sampling, first of all, we have the, important, the fake negative weighted loss on the, on the top of the slide. And what this method does is it uses the model estimate, the model output, uh, in the importance weights, and these are considered constant at training time. And it basically upweights positive examples and it downweights negative examples uh, with a term that is proportional to the model's prediction in terms of how likely a user is to engage with an ad. For the exact derivations, we refer the audience to, to our full paper. For the fake negative calibration approach, we don't apply any weights on the training samples, but rather transform the output of the network based on the formulation that is again derived from important sampling. For the first set of offline experiments, we used a, a relatively small and public data set provided by PTEL, and that contained 15.5 million ads with simulated fake negatives in order, in order to reproduce our, our training scheme. On this data set, if we focus on the results in terms of relative cross entropy, which is a normalized version of uh, cross entropy, we can see that the delayed feedback loss by Chappelle actually performs the best on this small data set. It's worth mentioning that higher values of relative cross entropy are better. Now, when we uh, perform the same set of experiments on proprietary Twitter data set, which unfortunately we were not able to publicly share due to sensitive user information, um, we trained on uh, 668 million ads and tested on 7 million ads. And our RC, or relative cross entropy um, results now indicate that fake negative calibration and fake negative weighted loss actually led to the best performance offline, which was not too different than um, the performance achieved with a positive unlabeled loss. For that reason, we decided to compare the top performing loss functions in the online setting because in the end, we want to use this loss, loss function in a continuous training framework. This, is, this was essentially an A-B test. And in this, uh, in this table, you can see the results in terms of uh, pooled relative cross-entropy, which is relative cross-entropy evaluated on the combined traffic generated by all the models for a fair comparison. And RP, RPMQ is uh, the revenue per thousand requests. For both of these measures, fake negative weighted loss led to the best performance, while fake negative calib calibration led to slightly higher, higher uh, monetized click-through rate. Uh, another observation that we made uh, in the online experiments was that the positive unlabeled loss 
diverged after two days of running the, uh, the online experiment, even though offline it performed or on par with the other two approaches. So this made this loss function very hard to, um, to actually use in, in a production system. To conclude, we solved the problem of uh, delayed feedback in a continuous training framework by relying on important sampling and important switch. And we proposed and applied for the first time on this problem fake negative weighted loss and fake negative calibration, which both uh, rely on a, a simple um, solution from important sampling. We evaluated um, this method in an offline setting on a large proprietary dataset as well as a smaller um, public dataset and performed online A-B tests. Uh, our next steps that we'd like to, to explore are first of all addressing uh, catastrophic forgetting in the continuous training framework um, of past examples and at the same time um, alleviate overfitting to more recent samples. Uh, another direction that we'd like to investigate is better exploration strategies that would help us tackle the problem or of um, algorithmic uh, compounding or, or bias which arises when we can constantly train on, on the exploitation traffic. And yeah, if you're interested in any uh, of our problems, please come talk to us to our book. Thank you. Please give me any questions. I see some over here. Samples, uh, you showed a user ID add ID and timestamp. Uh, if uh, the user comes back to the different session but it still didn't click, uh, does that update that fake negative or it adds a new one? If the context or yeah, user information changes, then this is not a fake negative anymore. Like this, the, the feature information needs too much, exactly, I guess, to, for it to be considered a fake negative. We need to sometime in the future observe a positive for this exact same feature. Hi, uh, thanks for your talk. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned that the fake negative approach works better if the CTR, expected CTR is low. So uh, do you have an intuitive sense of what is considered to be in your CTR? Sorry, if we have a sense for uh, intuitive sense for what is considered to be low CTI. Uh, so uh, you mentioned um, that this works better with low CTR. Yeah, low CTR can be like 0.1%, something like that, which for, for some kinds of, uh, certain types of access. <coughs> yeah, expected. Yeah. Any questions? Thanks for your talk. Uh, you're, since you're using uh, a very big uh, offline data set, uh, what there are an inconsistency between offline evaluation and your online A-B testing. I'm interested to know, do you have any justifications to, for the main reasons, even in this very large data set, uh, and you're using important sampling, uh, why this happens that still there is an inconsistency between offline and online evaluation? Uh, are you referring to the positive unlabeled loss results? I guess um, it because the formulation for the positive unlabeled loss is um, is more unstable. It, we empirically observe that it's easier for it to uh, diverge in the online setting, and when we were um, 
evaluating offline, we run the same experiment several times, and we even in the offline setting, we saw that uh, performance for the positive unlabeled labels were uh, fluctuating more than for the other approaches, uh, but we reported the median anyway. Uh, so it's not. It was not really such a surprising uh, finding in the end in the online experiments. And anyway, when we cold start uh, the models before the uh, the online training part, we would train on the same amount of uh, of data as we did in the offline experiments. All right. Thanks, speaker. Thank you.